Hey guys, so today I am going to be discussing how I built my Rock Crusher. I've had a lot of people show interest in how it was made, uh, also saying that they're going to build one themselves, and I uh, figure I'd go through the steps and some of the issues I had when making it. Hopefully save you guys a little bit of time if you plan on making one of these yourself. Now, I started off by ordering eight pieces of eight inch uh, stainless, or not stainless, uh, mild steel. A uh, quarter inch thick, and then I had two pieces of 20 by 20 quarter inch steel. And uh, it just so happens that it works out that it's flush on all sides after you weld it. Um, the chute that I have in the back was made out of four inch exhaust. I went up to my uh, local exhaust dealer and bought a length off of it and cut it up and welded it. Now, I should have made a video of this when I was building it, um, but this is my first like real welding job. Uh, I mean, I welded before in the past, but not where the strength was actually critical. Um, and I guess that's no excuse, I should have done it anyway, but here we are. Uh, the brackets that hold on the front door are just angle brackets, quarter inch. Uh, I got a big old long piece of angle iron and just cut sections off of it. And that's what made these. Um, in a previous video, I had sh shown how I made this shaft. Uh, I'll put a link in the description if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you wanna see how I made this part here, uh, you can go check that out. But what I did was um, welded together the octagon first, this border that you see all the way around. Um, this part was tricky, and I scratched my head on it for a while of what the best way I was going to do it is. Uh, and I came up with this method. Now, this is just a scrap piece that I cut. I don't have the original piece that I used. But essentially, I had a piece of uh, acrylic shaped almost exactly like this. You want to cut the angle, get out of the shadow, to where that angle is 135 degrees. And then these two holes that are drilled, I actually used a hole saw in my original piece, but I just drilled the holes here so you could see where they would be at. This is what I used for the clamp. So I put it in there like this and I clamped this one eight by eight square and clamped this other eight by eight square into these holes onto this piece of wood. And then on the side, I ran a couple tack welds to hold it and then I moved on to the next piece. And ran a couple tack welds ran onto the next piece, ran a couple tack welds, and eventually I had this whole thing tack welded up, and it worked out well enough that I didn't, by the time I got down to the very last weld, I didn't have to try to bend or hammer it or anything. It, it was lined up pretty well. And then it was just a matter of welding it up. And I ran a weld and filled the V on all these corners, and then I went on the inside and welded the inside as well. And then I went around and welded it to this back plate all the way around. Now before it, I'm kind of getting out of order, on this particular, on this back plate, before I welded it to the octagon, I had cut this hole out using a grinder and I had drilled these holes out for the shaft. Shaft obviously has to be right in the middle. Uh, this hole is off to the side so it drops in and gets crushed as it turns. Now this spins counterclockwise, so I wanted the pieces to come in at a counterclockwise angle. Um, so it all get thrown out these holes here on the side. Now, one thing I plan on doing before I fire this back up, as you can tell, this is rusted. I haven't fired this up for at least a couple of months because it's been winter and it's been just frigid cold. And I haven't wanted to get out here and deal with it. Um, but before I fire this up again, I am going to double the amount of holes that I have drilled here. Um, this works well, except that after an hour or two of crushing, um, the bottom here gets filled up. Not enough gets vented out the side here. Uh, so more holes should hopefully alleviate that. Now, you can see this ring that I have around here. That's because I was using, I guess, like double-sided sticky tape to stick on this attachment here for this duct. Um, that turned out to be a horrible failure. 
uh, the tape just doesn't hold. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to go around and drill and tap a couple holes all the way around so I can screw that piece on and not have to worry about it and then just caulk it up. Now one thing you do want to keep in mind when building this is uh, the dust from whatever you're crushing will leak out of every single crack. Um, this is the reason why I was using that double sided sticky tape is more of a gasket than anything. Uh, so whenever you put this side on, make sure that it's either welded shut and closed or that you have some sort of silicon or something there to seal it up because it dust will f just pour out of it. And the same goes for this front door. Uh, if you look here, I have just weather stripping. And that works well enough. I mean, the weather stripping that is on the inside gets pretty much disintegrated immediately. But the uh, weather stripping that is pressed up against the metal here uh, has not worn out of me yet. Um, this frame here, I would be lying if I knew exactly where this came from, uh, this metal. I had bought it up there, up at a, a scrap steel, and I'm thinking, if I had to take a guess, I think that's like signpost for street signs, or at least that's kind of what it looks like. Um, but I cut it up and got basic stand made. Uh, as you can see, I've got more angle brackets down here to mount with. Um, I just run through these holes. I didn't drill any custom holes here. Uh, one issue I ran into was is I didn't quite get these lined up. So I got a bolt here. And I got a bolt here. Oh no, I guess I did get them all lined up. For a long time, I was running it with only two bolts. Because uh, I couldn't get it all bolted in. Um, now, for the motor, I just picked this up at Harbor Freight for like 100 bucks. And it works fine, works wonders. More than powerful enough, I could turn it down on low and it's still more than powerful enough to run this. Uh, the pulleys and the bearings, I had just ordered off Amazon. Uh, and in case you wanna know what kind of bearings these are, I had a hard time trying to figure out what the name of these bearings were. Uh, these are called square flange bearings. So if you go to search for bearings like this, um, just search up square flange and you should be good. As for the wheels, these are just lawnmower wheels that I had a uh, threadless bolt go through. Well, thre threadless on most of it except for the end. Uh, just go through and they ride on that. Just goes into one of these holes here. Um, some things to remember when you're building this. The input that come that you drop the rocks in uh, needs to be angled in such a way that nothing flies back out. As you can see, it angles in like, uh, well, angles to go down, straight down, and then angles again. So any rocks that come up, they bounce around in here first, and then usually fall back down every once in a great while, I'll have something fly out, but it's pretty rare. Um, you can even, while it's running, put your hand over this and you can feel a suction, almost like a vacuum, keeping the dust inside. That's one of the benefits of having this run in on the side so it all continues its counterclockwise motion. Um, I mean, it's, beyond that, it's really not that hard of a build. Uh, this plate, this front plate, the only, th only thing that's really done to it is it's got four holes in the corners drilled. For these bolts to bolt onto these brackets here and it's got a square flange bearing here in the middle to go onto the shaft um, now you'll notice that there's a lot of rust and everything in here just because I haven't used it in a while um, this rust is essentially stripped away the first time you turn it on in fact I bet you I don't even have to uh, throw a rock in here uh, just the dust that's in here will be enough to clean the, the inside. The bolts back here I thought would have gotten damaged. This was one part that I was actually worried about holding on this uh, bearing. Um, but after several, several, several hours of use, these aren't even nicked. They have pretty much no wear on them whatsoever. Um, so if you have bolts on this back plate, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now I can see issues if you have bolts along the outside. 
uh, they will probably get worn down pretty quick. But the ones on the back plate seem to be just fine. I guess uh, I will go ahead and put this together and fire it up and show you what it looks like uh, without throwing any rocks in. Just the dust in here will clean up all the rust on the inside. Now, like I mentioned, I haven't started this up in a few months. It's been wintering underneath the carport here. So we will see how well this actually turns on. I did. started up a lot better than I thought it would. Okay, so I, as you can see, I didn't let it run for very long. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this back again and take off the front wheels, take a look on the inside and see how well that cleaned it So up. as you can see, in that short amount of time, it pretty much sandblasted all of the rust inside away. Um, now there is this coating of manganese ore dust covering everything, but um, I'm not seeing any rust anywhere in here now. Well, a little bit on these chains. Um, but the inside cleans up pretty quick once you start throwing stuff through. I would have to say the hardest part about building this was figuring out how to make this octagon properly. Um, essentially to make sure that by the time I go to weld in this last plate, it actually fits in and I don't have to bang on it and bend it and everything else. And then the next hardest part was finding a belt that actually work with this. We had bought, I don't know, five or six different belts, all a little bit too big or a little bit too small. And uh, eventually we did find the right one, obviously. Um, but that turned out to be quite a trick. I think this came from, or I think this is a V belt off of an old Chevelle that we ended up finding that works. Um, I was originally looking up lawnmower belts and it turns out all of them are just way, way too long. Uh, so go up to a car parts store um, with, with a string, just tie a piece of string around both pulleys and tie it up, make sure the string is nice and tight and take it off and then take that up to the car parts store and they can find a belt for you. Um, if they can't, you probably need to find a new car parts store. But after that, the only thing left to do is figure out how you want to mount the engine and the crushing, uh, the crushing box here. Uh, that's going to be really dependent on your frame. I've seen people make this on dollies. Uh, I just happen to have the steel to make a frame for this, but that is that's probably the least difficult part of the whole whole shebang. And that is all I have for for now. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty simple build once you start getting into it. Uh, however, if you do end up having questions or need a little bit of help, uh, just shoot me a message in the comments and I will be sure to try to answer as best as I can.